Greetings, my YouTube community. Today, we're doing a breakdown video on the penultimate track of the EP called Pieces. If you don't know what the word penultimate means, then that's your word of today. Look it up. It's a great word. I'm gonna keep this intro short and we're gonna get right into the production, so let's check it out. Alrighty, here is the project for Pieces. So starting off with the song, um, I have this like main guitar thing that happens throughout a big portion of the song, mostly the verses and pre-choruses. I'll show you what they sound like first in the verse by themselves. That's just normal acoustic guitar that was played very poorly by me, but I don't know, I feel like even when things are played poorly, there's like personality to it and it's like my own personality. So it's imperfect, but it still sounds kind of good. So I actually have two layers. I have one high guitar and one that's low guitar. So yeah, those are low pass. So here in the beginning, they are recorded and put in a separate channel where I put specific EQ filter on. So starting off, we have this like really cool sound. This is what it sounds like. And the way I made that was actually like a vocal recording where like I had this weird sound in my vocal and I recorded it and then I added effects to it. So this is what it sounds like by itself. Like I don't really know how that happened, but it did. And I just capitalized on it. Um, so we have this piano that's low passed. So we have that rhythm going on. It's, it's the same rhythm as the acoustic guitar. It's just a low pass piano sound. And on top of that, we have this guitar. And so all those three things together, the piano, guitar, and this guitar lead sound like this. I took a shot thinking you feel the So yeah, just a nice little simple bed for the vocal to sit on top of. I like having a verse really low pass so that the vocal can shine the most. Then halfway through, we have Ear Candy come in. Okay, so it used to be this beat. And then I added all these effects to it, and then it became this. And then I have this FM8 pad come in with that same rhythm. This is just a little, a little reverb throw. And then this is a really cool sound that I love that happens later in the song as well. I'll explain more on that sound when it comes in in the chorus. So those things just start rising the energy a little bit. In the pre-chorus, when the comes in, we got this guitar pad, which I think was a guitar I recorded, kind of the similar notes, but just with a ton of reverb um, in Guitar Rig 5, probably. Simple one note acoustic guitar. Really cool rhythm. Sub bass comes in. And then these sounds, I was really proud of these. Couldn't tell you what they are yet. It kind of sounds like scissors. Maybe it was scissors. I honestly don't remember what I recorded there, but through all these effects, space modulator and imager and transient processor turn into that. And then when you mix that with a guitar note, it sounds really cool. I have this like snare drum, tonal snare drum thing. And that sounds cool. Nice little silence for the breath to come in in the vocal. That was just something in the songwriting that I, I thought it would be cool to have like a little breather kind of um, section. And I kind of found myself while I was producing this, every time I like listen to this. With that breath, like I found myself like breathing along with it and kind of like finding a little bit of relief, just like a deep breath. There's a lot of stress in finishing a song for me. It takes a lot out of me. I just thought it was kind of interesting that like while I was producing this, sometimes I would feel stressed and I would like breathe along with myself and be like, <sighs> and it like kind of actually made me feel a little bit better. So that's kind of random and cool. So now we're in the chorus. This was a chorus, musically was inspired by Conversations with My Wife by John Bellion. 
I loved the way that he had like a syncopated like bass sound and I was covering most of the energy. So I wanted to have that. So I'll show you the bass sounds first. There's like quite a few of them. This first one is my real bass that I played with a pick. And I actually recorded it with a microphone as well at the same time. So this was the sound of the pick in real life hitting the strings. Yeah, without it. It's just like a, a real picking sound. And then I just added a bunch of like Vocodex, um, Serum Effects, the All Pass Filter, Space Modulator, just a bunch of stuff to make it sound really creative. So both of those together. Sounds really wide and really cool. Trillion, it's got a really consistent like deep low end. Yeah, that's it for the bass. So all three of those together sound like this. We have some percussion stuff. I call the channel laundry because it kind of sounds like a laundry machine, like stuff going around. We have this percussion sound from the pre-chorus that I repurposed. And then this thing. I think this was taken from a loop that I just chopped up. Here's a little percussion sound that I recorded. This is a single note acoustic guitar. This is what it sounds like beforehand. And then with all these effects. I think the delay was doing a lot of the fruity delay. There's like a weird sound with this. So that added another like wider dimension to the bass sound. And then we have this sound that I was mentioning earlier. So this is actually um, a real piano. At my old house, there was this upright piano and I would put my hand on the strings to mute them and then play the notes. And I think I recorded it with my iPhone because I didn't want to bring a mic all the way over there. I'll show you what it sounds like without any effects on it. That's such a cool sound to me. I use it in like several of my other songs or a couple of mine. I, I use it in Shut Up. And then um, it's just filtered right now. I think later in the second verse. Yeah, it doesn't have a filter on it. Then there's these chords that hold down. This is from Massive. With a bunch of distortion and reverb on it. Kind of like Lauv type synth. And yeah, all those things together sound like this. The second half of the chorus, I have a couple new things come in. I forgot about this sound. This is like a little single note. This is repurposed for my song Deja Vu. Guitar pluck. And then we have piano chords being held down. And it kind of rises a little bit and then cuts off at the end. Yeah, we have this little transition section, which I thought was kind of creative. It kind of introduces this new melody that actually, this was the first thing that I wrote when I was coming up with the song on the piano was this little thing. This little melody right here. And I have that being played on multiple. This was like a really weird, I just like took this one sound from Walk Away and like use Manipulator on it. And it just kind of like screwed up the sound. So there's several layers playing that same melody and I think it ends up sounding really cool. There's also this layer as well. So all those together made a really cool melody sound. And then we have the acoustic guitar filtering back in. And then we also have this like um, pluck that I made on Massive, I think. And all those things together just kind of like rise into the second verse. And we're into the second verse. All right, so the second verse is where things get really fun. First of all, we have a beat that comes in. Just a nice, and then we have this. Uh, might be similar to the sound in the pre-chorus. I don't remember what this is. The guitar keeps going. It's not low pass this time. We have like a muffled melody like that was in the transition section. 
which is mimicked by this massive pluck synth. We got our piano, muted piano sound. This is a cool little like wow sound. All those together sound like this. Then we have this little fun section where it's one of my favorite lines in the song and I wanted to create a moment with it. I was inspired a lot by Zed and also my friend Adam Turley who's like amazing at doing little cool moments in the song. So I was just, I wanted like there to be like a vocoder type thing that mimics the chords as there's like a little chord change during this line. So this is the section. <laughs> So what we have here, this slidey bass, um, new acoustic guitar chords that I have a filter kind of going down as each one happens. This melody keeps happening, these chords come back, then I have a low pass piano sound that's mim mimicking the guitar thing. And another synth. Another synth. Little crash cymbals to play at the same time. All those together sound like this. And then in the vocal part, I actually have these vocoder chords playing the same exact thing. So by themselves, the vocals sound like this. From the colors I wanna see. So yeah, all those things together would just make this really cool moment. From the colors I wanna see. And then another thing that I love is that there's this new melody that comes in the second part of this verse. My CPU be looking like the stock market. So we got this little melody. Here's one layer, and then. I love this sound. It sounds really similar to the sound that Zed used in in his song Good Thing. I think it might be a similar patch, but it just like that little melody adding there just felt so good to me. And then I just added the melodies back in, like this sound. There's another little moment here that I created before the second pre-chorus. And it's just like these piano chords come back and the synth with some electric distorted guitars. I did these ambient guitars. Ton of, ton of reverb, probably um, Valhalla Shimmer. And then we got a bass that comes in. I think all of the same elements as the first pre-chorus, only this time we just have a couple extra elements. One of them being this strange string sound. This was just really experimental for me. break before this chorus is half as long as the previous one. But now for this other chorus, we have the same instruments as the first chorus. I think the only difference is that this is not filtered now. And then we also have a kick drum that's going along with it. I wanted to get really creative with sounds. I generally want to with all my songs, but this one particularly, I wanted to get really experimental with repitching stuff in a weird way. And we have this sound which was like a very, very stretched guitar with some like repitching and, and delay and reverb. It's weird, but it's like adding some coolness to the song that makes it a little bit more unique. One more thing that I added here was some extra like punk rock kind of guitars. Again, Reliant K influence for me. In the final project, I added some more to thicken it up, but this is the vibe. I feel like this of all my songs is the most similar to Reliant K. If you ever want to check them out, they're, they don't really make much music anymore, but their album, Mm Hmm, was very influential in my life. So kind of hear some of that inspiration coming out in my music. And then this part, second half of the chorus, things start building more, some little pad stuff. This is where we're recorded from Omnisphere, kind of layered. This thing comes back in octave. I'm super stoked about these drums. I had a couple layers. 
and then these drums here together with all the drums. So this section actually took me a very long time to get right because I wanted it to carry the energy, but I didn't want it to be a wall of sound just for the sake of a wall of sound. I wanted, to be, I wanted each part to be specifically put there for a reason. These big boy drums along with it. Another drum loop layering on top of that. This is a really cool guitar sound that I came up with. It's like stretched and blurred and distorted. We got the guitars keeping it driving. This thing. Uh, this is a cool just like guitar layer, like pitch down guitar note that's distorted a bunch to, to mimic the horn sounds. Got the pad comes back in, this pad as well. And then here's the horn sounds. A synth sound covering some of the really high frequencies on the horn hits. We got our synth coming back in. This one is a, a bigger sounding synth that covered the high frequencies on each, each stab. And another one just to make it thicker. I just have a bunch of layers on these same sounds because they needed like I didn't want to have too many different parts I just wanted each part to be layered enough so that it um, covers enough energy So all those things together One new thing I add is this live recorded drum take that I did it sounds like kind of weird But as a layer on top of the drums, it sounds cool Yeah, I've recorded that on a real drum set. And then I also have these ride cymbals and these hats and toms. Um, that kind of just elevates the energy even more. Then I also have this um, new vocal part that I came up with last minute to add more energy. Don't think about it, can't sleep, you got it. I think I may have added a couple more layers to thicken it up in the final mixing session, but um, that's pretty much it. And then the outro, just piano and a little vocal, really emotional, sad. And yeah, that's, that's the song, that's Pieces. All right, that's it for the production breakdown of my song Pieces. As always, my hope is that you guys are inspired by this. I honestly just really appreciate the fact that you guys actually enjoy watching my videos and wanting to hear what my production tricks are and diving into my own tracks. It seriously means a lot to me that you guys actually care that much to want to watch these videos. And if you're new to my original music, feel free to check it out on any streaming platform. If you liked this song, then odds are you'll probably like at least a couple more on the EP. So that's it for this video. We got one more breakdown after this to complete the EP breakdowns. And uh, what else? Oh, if you're not already subscribed, <laughs> dude, subscribe. It's not that hard. And hit the bell. It's equally unhard. All right, that's all I got for you guys. Peace. You and I were just not meant